I was married off by my father when I was 14. They tried to arrest me when I went to swim without the full bodysuit. When I was in prison for protesting, I could hear the women cry while raped, knowing I was going to be next. The Islamic Republic of Iran is one of the worst countries in the world for women's rights. It's just a tiny bit better than Afghanistan. And as most women know, being a lady in this world is something that men never get to fully understand. And this is why I, Lisu, am telling this story instead of Joe. How did I feel in the country where women are considered the less important and the inferior gender? Was I even safe? We drove into Iran with our own car, having no tour guides, no set routes and no safety net in that sense. And people are currently protesting here. It might seem the main reason is the mandatory hijab law, but even though this is oppression by itself, this is only a small part of the truth. If women walk in the street without a hijab or the headscarf, they could be sent to a mandatory course on humility or straight to jail. And as we know, this is how it all started, with an arrest that led to death. The privilege of being a lady in this part of the world is not getting free drinks at the bar, but rather in this part of the world, the privilege of being born a girl could mean getting legally married at the age of 13. Such arranged marriages are still part of this culture, and this is only a fraction of what makes this society deeply unequal. While reading the Islamic law, I already realized I have committed crimes for which death penalty is applied in Iran. Arriving to Iran from Iraqi Kurdistan created mixed feelings. Firstly, it was exciting to finally get to see the elusive Iran that a lot of people don't dare to travel at the moment. 20 kilometers that way is Iranian border. But on the other hand, I knew that men and women are not equal here and that I had to be a lot more careful to be yeah, safe. I'm ner nervous, nervous now, nervous now. The first sign of arriving to Iran was to put the headscarf on, as it is mandatory for everybody, tourists included. And oh, did I do it carefully with every piece of hair tucked away, as I didn't want to give the police any extra reasons to get us into trouble, as arrests on foreigners had become more common with the protests. Some locals even asked if I was Muslim because my headscarf was done so well. But what can I say, I was constantly scared and tried to do it as properly as possible. In the streets, I even noticed that the local older gentlemen treated me a little differently than in the countries before. They were cold and almost always talked to Joe. Even when I was standing between them, they talked over my head and it felt weird to be left out. But I guess this is how the society works. Men and women are separate. There is even boy and girl schools and men and women who are not related to each other shouldn't even shake hands, let alone speak to each other. I guess this is the same way that women are treated here. I felt isolated and angry at times for being ignored. <sighs> With the coming weeks, I slowly started to understand the struggles of this country's women by meeting the locals. The most common profession among older women was to be a housewife. And by the words of the country's supreme leader, every woman's only job was to be a good wife and have children, to be worth anything here. <laughs> I don't want to focus too much on the governmental film here, but in short it said women have nine times more shame than men and they have to listen to their husband than the government for the world not to end. I guess that is putting way too much pressure on uncovered hair to bring down a whole country. But the younger generation were different. There were ladies walking in the street freely, without caring about the dress code and saying that they don't believe in Islam this way. And I admired those brave girls, knowing about the horrible punishments. And even though the system was oppressive, it couldn't kill the freedom those women longed and deserved for. I did not even dare to think about doing the same because I was afraid. Because if I want to go swimming, I'm gonna have to basically be a freaking ninja. And everything has to be covered. My head, my shoulders, my knees and toes. I can show nothing.
nothing in this country. I was afraid for being punished for ordinary everyday things, which are crimes in Iran. For example, living as boyfriend and girlfriend is not allowed in Iran, and premarital sex can even lead to death penalty for the woman. Remember guys, we are married now. They literally ask for marriage certificate in some places to get a joint room in a hotel. Because of that, we told everybody we were married here for safety reasons. They were like, wife? Like, wife. Oh. As executions were getting more common by the regime to contain the protests. I wasn't afraid of going to jail per se, but the fact that human rights were not particularly honored by the gods and there were no fair trials. Torture and rape towards prisoners is extremely common in Iranian jails. And even the law says that if a girl has a death penalty and is a virgin, she is to be raped in order to avoid her getting into heaven. Rape is extremely hard to prove in Iran, and marital rape is not even a crime. This all leads to the fact that women tend to stay in abusive marriages, as honor killings of women are about 30% of all the murders here. And if not married, girls had their father's word to follow. And extreme pressure by the families to fit into the conservative society standards. And I felt these were all high enough stakes for me to stay as invisible to the police as possible. Because I'd never know if police would find me as prison material. And that terrified me. Every day I did do my best to follow the rules. And more often than not, I was anxious. But I saw that... People did not care about the regime's demands, and a lot of people had freedom on their minds. Even I started to loosen up a little bit and be a bit more creative with my head coverings. A lot of people did not care about the Islamic law and the dress code that said how much hair they can show. And the only goal for a woman in life was not to have children and be a good wife, but to have choices and freedom over their own future. And I learned that religion can be a beautiful thing, if not used against the people, especially women. Wearing the headscarf can seem fun for a day, if it is a choice. Then in the long run, having a government dictate what to wear and how much rights you have depending on your gender is deeply disturbing and oppressive. I know my actions and feelings alone will not change anything and the only way for me was to cope with the overflow of emotions that I felt towards a society I would never feel comfortable living in. Here is how I felt during this month as inferior gender. I felt left out when men talked over my head and useless when Joe did most of the official explanations and procedures as if needing a man and needing to be married to get anything done. I started to believe that maybe I do need to be ashamed of my body if I have to cover it up all the time. And I felt anxious that if I don't cover up properly, horrible things could be done to me. I should be shame, shame. The constant feeling of being scared of the crimes and punishments made a very uneasy month for me. So you see how the protests are not just about the mandatory hijab law, but human rights, equality and ending the dictatorship. By the time of posting this video, we have left Iran and are safe. But millions of people are still living under these rules. And when we asked them what would be their message to the world, they told us, be our voices. Thank you friends for watching and see you again next week for some more Iranian adventures. Bye.